Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hidden Pearls podcast. We apologize for your show coming a little bit later this week, but we had some special guests. I'm not apologizing. Who we wanted to be with. So this fluffy pink animal. Hello, Hi. everybody. Happy holidays. Um, happy but yeah. holidays. Happy to be here. Holidays to you. Happy We're almost there. How are we doing, George? How are we doing? I'm wonderful. It's, How was your cold plunge today? It was cold. cold. It was cold. It's colder up here. Oh, great. It's got a nice chill in the air here in uh, the Bay Area. Very excited about it. Football weather is here. Wow. And we're in football season. So, and the family's here. So, what else could I ask for? Amazing. Amazing. And your wife is incredibly over the spooky. top at decorating. So, just She's you guys will spooky. see some social media pictures, but the amount of pumpkins and skeletons around us right now is actually alarming. So, Bruce, yeah. how are you? Uh, doing really well. Very excited to be here. I'm excited about the upcoming game. Uh, I've been in California because I was down at your place this last week and it was super fun. And so uh, kind of living the Cali style. This is my kind of October. So it's all good and uh, grateful to be here. And it's beautiful. And Down in San Diego? Yeah, down in San Diego. Diego. Banzol. Banzol. You don't need to tell everybody the where. The Ponce's in Banzol. You don't need to tell everybody where they live. Oh, yeah, it's okay. okay. It's anyway, okay. Now you know. Okay. Anyway, great. Let's roll. <laughs> all right, everybody. Let's get into it. Go. The Niners return home to the friendly confines of Levi Stadium after a tough couple weeks on the road mm. that left them at two and or five and two. Jeez. <laughs> Sunday oh, they host the three and three Bengals, who are riding a two-game win streak and are three and zero versus the Western Division NFC teams, having defeated the Rams, Cardinals, and Seattle already this season. Niners will try to get healthy, regroup after a tough tough loss against the Vikings last mm. week, twenty two seventeen, and get back into the win column before heading into their bye week. Great time to get back on track. Bam. 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 What are you feeling, Bruce? Uh, well, I'm feeling a lot, actually. So that was a tough couple of weeks. Not where we thought we'd kind of be right there, but every, any given Sunday, so you never know. So it really doesn't matter what's already happened. It matters what we do this week. So what are we going to do about it today? What are we going to do about it today? So uh, so we are recording uh, a little bit later in the week than normal. So uh, I know, and I know we got to get our mind right, and the mind right now is on the Bengals. Just a wide open question, George. Any kind of processing things? I mean, what'd you take away? Is there any lessons from the Viking stuff that just as you guys rolled into this week? I mean, that was a tough Monday night game. You got to turn around. It's a short week. You don't, you know, you miss a day and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and plus back to back losses. And you got a couple of people nicked up and all that kind of stuff. Purdy with the concussion and all that kind of thing. So, um, where are you guys at and how's the mood and all that thing? Uh, well, we. We started off, you play on Monday night, and then it's a, you get home, whatever, 3, 4 a.m. That's a Tuesday, so then you have that Tuesday to recover, and then, hey, you're back at it on Wednesday. So it is a shorter week, um, which sometimes is good because that only gives Kyle one day to game plan for everything, <laughs> and not multiple days. And so uh, I'm just kidding, but, uh, you know, we have our game plan in. I'm a fan of it. A lot of fun stuff going on in there. Um, lessons from the Vikings game, you one know? question. Yeah. Don't you think, though, with the extra day the week before, he probably spends one of those days getting ready for the game after Monday Night I think, Football? <laughs> I think all of the other coaches around, like, they break – all the film will be broken oh, down. Sure. Yeah. All So they'll all get ahead. But I think it'd be difficult for someone who's making plays to try to make plays for the yeah. following week. Besides, we also played them two years ago, and they had the exact same coordinator, and they, they played the exact same defensive scheme. So I'm not going to say that we're going to run the exact same playbook, but – you can pull a lot of stuff from there that if you wanted to. So I think he he was comfortable with that. I haven't talked to him about that. That's just me assuming things. And yeah. you know what they say about people who assume? Don't make an ass out of you or me. I'm We're always right. No, that's what I was going to say. Oh, let's not make an ass out of you or me. There you there go. There it is. Um, let's see. Lessons, though, from that game. Um, you know, if I want to look at if I want to look at the negatives, you could say, um, you know, we didn't play our best football. Uh, we had costly turnovers. and <laughs> Um, yeah, we ended up losing the game. I, in my, you know, how I view the game though, is did we play our best football? No. Um, but we still had a chance to win it there at the end. And that's all you could ask for. I mean, um, you know, unfortunately we didn't get done. Like, you know, we had a, a nice office drive against the Browns go down there. Unfortunately don't make the field goal. Hey, that happens. You prefer it not to, but it, right. it happens sometimes. It's like, okay, well, that that's how that went down. Like, how are we going to get better from that? And how are we going to change or how are we going to, you know, just focus on other things 
to try to improve it. And then this past week, uh, you know, defense um, holds them where they need to hold them. They miss a field goal. We have an opportunity to go down there and, you know, get it. And, hey, unfortunately, it just didn't happen. But uh, the thing I do like is that offense had the ball in their hand at the end of the game. And um, we had opportunity out there. And, you know, we were moving the ball. So it's not like, you know, we're going three and out with, you know, pressure on us. It was guys elevated their game and guys were playing pretty well there at the end. You know, like Ray Ray McLeod had zero catches. And on the final drive in a two-minute drill had two – 10, 12 yard catches that move the ball. And so you're, I'm happy that there's guys in our team that um, aren't folding under pressure, I would say, or I don't know if that's the thing, or it's just like, they're just going out there and playing football like we've been playing. Mm -hmm. And so it's great to see that. Um, I would much rather prefer to win those games. Hey, it is what it is. But, um, you know, this is a resilient team. We're a team full of really good, talented player, players. And, uh, you know, I believe in us. And right. I know there's a lot of people that believe in us. The skeleton and I believe in you. Totally. You know, George, I think you make a great point, though. The one thing we know about the NFL, especially when we get toward the end of the season, when all the games, you know, really start packing in and you get into those playoff games, everything's going to be super close. There's going to be these clutch games and you're going to have a few of these. So good to have this team under pressure like that. And hopefully those lessons will kind of carry over. So, yes. OK, well, let's roll then. OK, uh, quickly on the NFC West standings, because we want to check in with our we do uh, want to check in. OK, Niners uh, sit at the top at five and two with the loss of the Vikings. Now this week, the Bengals, we're going to get into them who are three and three and beat Seattle last week, 17 to 13. Uh, actually, that was in week seven. The Bengals are coming off a bye, so we'll talk about that mm. for week seven. So another team we're facing on the upswing from a bye. Mm. Seattle, uh, they are four and two. They beat the Cardinals twenty to ten last weekend, and they're playing Cleveland this weekend. We're at home or away. Uh, they are at home. Okay. Yep. Uh, and Cleveland last week beat the, in a controversial game. Our friend uh, DeForest Buckner kind of getting ripped off there. Four to two, beat the Colts, thirty nine thirty eight. That's tough. Okay, Rams three to four or three and four lost to the Steelers. Twenty play Dallas this week, and they play Dallas this week. Nice. And, and then the Cards host the Ravens. Very good, George. Yes. Thank you. Cardinals are one and six, lost to Seattle last week, <laughs> and then they host the Ravens five to two. All right. So who are five and two? Okay. There it is. There it is. Okay. You know what's uh, real? Um, Real quick, yesterday I'm pulling out of the facility at, I don't know, like 4.30, 5 o'clock after my body maintenance stuff, and there's one family waiting outside of the front gates, and let's see, dad, it's dad, two sons, mom, oops, sorry, dad, two sons, mom, uh, dad and one of the sons are in Kittle jerseys, and then other kid and mom are there in 49ers shirts, and you know, I, they're the only, they're only people out there, so I stop and say hi to them, and they're all from uh, Bellevue. Washington. So oh. they are up there in Seattle, Seahawk territory. Yeah. Brave, folk. brave, brave folk. And they, um, they came down for the game this week and, um, just incredibly cheerful and very, very happy, um, to be down here at going to a 49ers football game. And one of the sons, his name was Augie. I'm pretty sure what it was. He had some nice blonde curly hair. He was very pumped that, um, I had sought for them and it was just fun because, of how excited he was. And I just want to say, so thank you to you guys and keep fighting the good fight up there in Seattle uh, with all of the great vibes. Does he remind you of a young little George? I, it was just right. Cause like I got out of the car to take a photo with him. Oh, well, they're the only people there. Oh, no. it's just like, it was easy to do. Yeah. It was very easy to do. And they're very, they're very polite. And all you have to do, as long as you're polite with me, I will be very, very, um, I will engage. do it. I'll engage with you as much as I possibly can, as long as you're polite. And that's very, that shouldn't be very hard. Um, but like, he just kept looking at me and doing my third down celebration. He just kept looking at me going. How old do you think he was? Um, <laughs> somewhere between the, both boys were somewhere between seven and 11. It would be my guess. Seven and 12. Very cool. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. I absolutely loved it. And then like the dad, I said, was wearing his shirt. I was like, you want me to sign it? He was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like all right a minute the process it's kind of a thing oh uh, no it was great they were fantastic and it put a big smile on my face so that was phenomenal all right oh we love smiles on your face it's i know great. you know another smile that you put on the face we're just jumping out a little bit uh but this week there were some posts the team and you guys do every like tuesday nights typically you know that's your big uh community night and you guys were at was it a hospital i think because stanford a, children's hospital stanford children's hospital and you guys had capes on some yep. of you. So that was pretty cool. And then there was a young man, I believe, in a wheelchair that you were sitting next to that had a 49ers thing. So just all the pictures. I think Fred was there and Nick was there and some of the other guys. And, and all the tight ends. Yeah. Well, besides my rookies. 
I'm looking at the camera if you got for you guys at home. They're listed on Spotify and iTunes and all that and podcast stuff. Yeah, my rookies didn't go, and then they're like, "Well, why didn't you tell me?" I'm like, they literally sit outside the locker room and tell you when these things are happening. So, rookies these days. Let's go, rookies. Anyways, elevate um, the game a little bit. Yeah, and then my yeah, but um, so let's see, tight ends, linebackers. Besides their rookies, too. Our rookie class needs to get it together. I don't know what they're doing. Um, tight ends, linebackers, uh, the quarterbacks were there. Um, offensive line and D-line. Very nice. It was, a, it was a good group. I think we had like 15 guys were there. Yeah. Um, yeah the picture was pretty – that's about what you had, 15 to 17 guys. Oh, there. and then um, Mrs. Lynch was there. Uh, Linda Lynch was there, which is awesome. She just, you know – she brings the house down. She's, you know, everyone is excited to see her as they should be. Yep. Um, Clark Kittle was there. What? Yeah. Oh, CK. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Danielle Dwelly was also there. Oh, great. No, tight end, tight end wives. Tight end spouses showing up. Showing yeah, up. Yeah, making a difference in the community. The better halves were there. Well done, Claire. Good job, Claire. Well, ooh, Claire. Yeah, in the midst of a, you know, we're about halfway through the season. I just, it's cool Great. though. Are we? Well, eight, and then you had your bye week, and then there's nine, nine left. What would you say is halfway through the season? Okay, not quite, but no, it is. It just, yeah, you're right. We're almost halfway through the season. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> a little. Hard I just, I don't know. All right, uh, but anyway, but I just a uh, reminder of all the other things in life that are going on, and uh, how much you guys do outside of the football field, which is super cool. So we got a great community relations team, and the team. And uh, the guys that show up all the time, it makes a huge difference. So anyway, just shout out for that. Our next one, actually, that it's not next week because next week's our bye. But the following week is, I'm pretty sure we're doing our, um, we're helping out and um, handing out food for Thanksgiving Oh, very at cool. a homeless shelter. I like that. I'm very excited. That's one of my favorite ones. Okay. The last time I went to that, three of the fans that were there all were in Jerry Rice Raiders jerseys. <laughs> 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 and this, so this would have been like, I mean... We haven't done it since before. So this would have been the 2019 season. Yeah. And when we did it, Larry, they were just chirping me the whole time about the Raiders. They're like, Raiders. Hey, Kittle, you guys stink. And I was like, I'm pretty sure we're like 8-0 and right now. Or like, we might be 8-2 and two or something like that. I was like, I'm pretty sure we've won a lot of football games this year. But whatever you guys say. That's oh, funny. my God. It was hilarious. Thank God for fans, though. That's what makes the game thing so okay <laughs> well let's get back then okay we got the Bengals coming up currently three and three all time the Bengals versus the Niners are four and eleven that's kind of interesting and the last game was wait, wait, so we're up in the series yeah I know why wouldn't you say the Niners are eleven and four because Bengals currently I'm, they are three and three but all I am the Niners well okay but I wrote it from okay there. key players yeah. Anyway, so I just put down a couple. I looked at the run, the offensive guys because they're a little bit more notable. You'll know the defense. So smoking Joe Burrow. I will. Mixon's the running back and Chase at wide receiver. They got some very talented dudes and all that kind of stuff. I'll give you some stats while you're pulling up your other stuff. Yep. So the stats, uh, they are Bengals are 29th in scoring, 16.7 points per game. Niners are second coming in at 28.7. Um, Bengals are 17th in points allowed, giving up 21.2. Niners are third in the NFL at 15.6. So a nice disparity there that we hope we can capitalize on. They're 32nd in yards per game with 274, and we're 10th with 375. Exactly. They're 11th in sacks with 19, and we're th and third in interceptions. We're 18th in sacks and first in interceptions. Yes. That's awesome. The last time we played, Emma, was when? uh 2021 december niners win 26 to 23 yes we went into the jungle we were welcomed to the jungle Ooh. and it took until overtime to win that game yes that was a fun one that was, that was, that so was how fun. does this i mean them coming off of bye week what uh what else do you have to prepare for um this is how i view it is yes you're coming off a of bye week so your body's going to feel a little bit better um your mind's probably a little bit more relaxed. You know, you just got to take a step back and look at what you have done already. And then you got to revisit your, what your goals are for the season. And okay, well, how am I going to either revamp, stay consistent or attack, uh, you know, the following weeks. And so you have this new energy going into it. Um, especially when you're going into the buy after a win, like you feel good, you're all fluffy. You're like, Oh, hey, I feel amazing. Yeah. Go, go team. And then, uh, then you come back and you're ready to roll. You get some good practices under your belt and you go out there and you're going to, you know, perform at a high level on Sunday. And then for my point of view for us though, is that we played on Monday night. So we're on a short week. We're definitely more sore. We're a little nicked up. 
but I will also say that um, Rare might be a little bit more spicy than they are. Mm. Um, the one thing about the one good thing about losing a Monday night football game is when you lose football games, all you want to do is get to the following Sunday. So you have an opportunity <laughs> to just move on from it, get a W and feel better. And the one good thing about losing a Monday night game, there's really almost nothing good about losing games, but one good thing that I can think of because I'm super positive and I like to spin things my, in my way is that you're one day closer is one less day of being sour. And so you just, you instantly have to flip the script and just go and you just have to go because if you just keep lingering on it, all it's going to do is hinder you for the rest of the season or the, that rest of the week. And then two turns into three losses. You're like, no, no. and that's, that's no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. No, we're, no, no, we're, no. We, we refuse to do that. So that is the one benefit of it being a Monday night game is, and they're coming off a of buy is we have this spiciness edge to us. I don't know. You know, I might be like a spicy breakfast burrito. That's how I feel. Ooh, and they're like a crepe right now, which is a nice soothing breakfast. I'm thinking more of like Sirvachi that's been in the fridge for a week too long. No, no, that's spoiled. And then it's, it doesn't <laughs> say the thing that that doesn't get any better. That's true. Okay. It's, I don't want to be that. No, right. no. I'm a spicy breakfast burrito and they are crepes right now. Love that. All right. So uh, how are we going to take down the crepes? How are we going to take down the crepes? Um, well, you guys like it when I talk football about these guys. So. I'm the their offense. You talk. You talk about their key players. Um, Joe Burrow, friend of Nick Bosa. Um, yeah, he's a good quarterback. Very talented. Uh, he's got really cool videos about him and his cool throws. He does awesome things in the pocket. He rolls out. He throws dimes. Uh, you know, Joe Shiesty, cool Joe Burrow. Cool Joe Burrow. Yeah, uh, he is cool. Um, it's been a while since we played video games together too, so I'm kind of resentful towards him right now. <laughs> kidding i'm not at all but um we used to play video games together once in a while just rocket league anyways <laughs> joe burrow that's him um on uh, let's see he has thrown to jamar chase still a really good wide receiver really good um higgins is over there really good wide receiver um mixon running back from oklahoma horns down um he's still a really good running back and when you have a quarterback and receivers that the Bengals have they can be in any football game at any time because last time when we played them we were up 20 to 6 in the fourth quarter I think and they scored on a slug like they ran a slant and go scored a touchdown and then I think we went three and out and then the following drive uh they threw a deep ball I think Jamar Chase got like a, p a penalty on it and they got moved down they scored a touchdown instantly right after that and so it was like it was a 14 point swing in three minutes. It was what it felt right. like. And so when you have weapons on the outside like that and a quarterback who can deliver, you're in every single game, no matter what. Um, so that is the biggest threat with the Bengals, in my opinion, on the offense. But I am also an offensive player, so I got to talk about their defense. Yes. Tell us and, about that. Well, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the similar guys, honestly, the biggest change from the last time we played them is they don't have Jesse Bates anymore, who was their safety, who signed this offseason with uh, the Atlanta Falcons. He is a very good football player. Happy that he's no longer there. Um, besides that, uh, there are two edge guys, uh, which is friend of Nick Bosa, Sam Hubbard, another mm -hmm. Ohio State guy. Um, Buckeyes. Him and Hendrickson. Um, they are their two edge players who are both very talented. Um, just watching their tape, they're both very strong. They're incredibly consistent. They're always in the right position. They don't, they don't ever put themselves in bad positions. Mm -hmm. Um and they just play the whole damn game. And you love playing against guys like that. I'm excited to play guys like that. Um, let's see. In the middle, though, they have Logan Wilson, I think number 55. And then Jermaine, yeah, Jermaine Pratt. Uh, he's number 57. Jermaine Pratt is a linebacker who I really like to play. Last last time we played him, I thought he was a really good football player. Um, and one of those underrated players, in my opinion. He flies around. And he, he reminds me like him and Dre Greenlaw are pretty similar. They're just like flying around. They're very aggressive. They hit really hard. If you're in a position of vulnerability, they will make you regret being in that position. And so, yeah, he smoked me a couple of times last year. I got up every time, so it is what it is. But he, he, he hits hard. So looking forward to that one. Uh, that will be some good competition. Um, besides that, uh, I, I think um, Could, let me, it, it play – what's up? Well, I just – the last couple of weeks, uh, Browns and the Vikings were pretty high – 
Blitzing they are teams. not a high blitz team. Uh, but okay. you know what? The thing about the NFL is it's a copycat league. And so who knows? We might go out there. We might get a lot of pressure stuff. And, you know, but that's not really their defense. Their thing is they, they do eight man boxes and they have everybody for a gap. That's kind of the way they play defense. You know, Ben, don't break. Like we're going to give you, we're, we're okay with giving you four to six yard runs. Um, and then we just don't think you're going to do it the whole way down the football field. Right. So they're going to, you know, play back, make sure no one gets over their head. And then they'll just be in those eight man fronts and um, which is totally fine. And, um, there's teams that, you know, you play like that. There's pluses and minuses to that. Like you said, like I said, there's a guy for every gap. But the thing about that is if one guy messes up in a gap during a run play, whoo, there goes Christian McCaffrey. Right. And so it's it's difficult to do that, but they are a very well coached team. They've been they're a team that's been doing it for a while together. So like they're all very aware of their responsibilities. They know how to play off of each other. Um, they hold each other to a high standard. So they are a like stats are stats. It is what it is. They are a solid defense with good players and a sound system. And so they're doing everything that they want to do. And I think they just want us to not, you know, they're, they're betting on us. They're not, they're not going to bet because that's illegal in the NFL. Yes. But they're banking on us not being able to move the ball down the field consistently over and over and over again. But they're gonna they're going to bank on Joe Burrow being able to light up our defense. And they're playing better. I mean, they've got two wins in a row over the NFC West teams, and so and they beat Seattle last week, which that you know is a thing because Seattle's playing. Seattle good went. Right now. Um, Seattle opening drive went down and scored in like ten plays, and then uh, went. So they went zero for four in the red zone after that. Wow. Ouch. Yes. That's tough. They only, they came with they had four red zone trips and only got three points out of it. Okay. That's that's tough. That's very tough. So good defense. Good defense, some bad plays by Seattle, you know, a couple penalties right. here and there. They get them backed up and then which is tough. But um, yeah. like I said, they're solid defense and we're looking forward to playing them. And now welcome to the Bay Area. Hey. Not yeah. the jungle. The Bay Area. Bam. Okay. The well, boys are back in town. Nice. Levi Stadium, 49ers, Bengals. Okay, well, there's our Bengals update. So we're pretty excited about that. That should be really, really fun. Yay. Um, so we'll just kind of wrap up because you got a full day today. Yes, I have to go to work right now. Yeah, we got to get you rolling. I so, eat breakfast. Uh, Charity of the Week. Last week, we did Next Door Solutions, domestic violence support out of the San Jose area. So if you're interested, they had their gala this month. And so you can check them out. This week, we're supporting their second. What? Gala. 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 That's how, yeah, gala. It's a party. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a happy party. For sure. For sure. For sure. Got it. All right. Bonds all. Anyway, this week, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank here in San Jose. So as we get, oh, we like and George Harvest. mentioned Thanksgiving and we everything turns around food because we tend to eat a lot. We're just reminding folks that there are people that are struggling with food scarcity. And so we'd like to help them. So if you're in this area, Second Harvest is a great option. And if you're somewhere else, uh, just encourage you to think about that. I also want to just bring up, George, real quickly. This week, we found out that you were nominated and voted by your team to the unity award which is called the perry i'm not going to pronounce that right your name unity award which is presented to the 49ers player who exhibits an exceptional commitment to promote unity within the team and in their community so i want to say congratulations for that thank you i think that's really cool and just for the team to clap one more time it's an uproarious applause but it's super really cool anyway and i just uh about your work as a leader within the context of that team and your role and your relationship with your teammates um and trying to pull all that kind of stuff together you don't have to say too much but give you i mean just i thought that was really cool um it is cool i had no idea that was a thing um i didn't even know there was a vote for it so i'm very thankful uh, that the team thinks that i do a good job of bringing this team together um i do try really hard with that which is just me being myself I just like to smile and talk to everybody and uh, remind everybody that we're always in this together. And also at the end of the day, we're playing football, which has been most of our dreams since we were children. <laughs> and so, hey, let's just have a great time doing it. Um, but yeah, and it's what's awesome too is uh, for the 49ers to allow me to you know choose an organization to donate money to and um, for us to pick someone that we've worked with multiple times. Yep, um, It's really cool. And I'm very happy about that. I'm excited that uh, you know, we get to like present a check to them at some point this Sunday. This Sunday, this Sunday. Yeah. I know. I was I wasn't sure that was supposed to be a secret or not. Oh, oh. they know. Everybody knows. Oh, everybody knows. Yep. Yeah. Shh. Everybody quiet. And which organization did you select? Uh, Operation Freedom Plus. Yes. Because I love dogs, and I also really love and respect the military. So might as well combine them together uh, for a fantastic cause. And so, um, looking forward to. 
um, you know, helping them out a little bit with this and continuing to work together in the future. Yep. And congratulations to Hidden Pearls podcast for just being awesome people <laughs> and helping everybody out. Speaking of that, um, if you are a, so congratulations, brother. So yes. proud of you. Thank you. Um, next or er, November 16th, we are doing the women of the Niners event and it is around November 16th. Yes. Thursday. Uh, it is about to get released. We are almost done with all the marketing stuff. But if you guys want to come to that, you can sign up. It'll be really fun. We actually do yoga on the field. We did it last year. It was great. And then we had Pops join us. We might have a special guest appearance this week. Um, Claire will definitely be there too. And November Mom, what? 16th before the Buccaneers game. Okay. And um, yeah, and there'll be a bunch of different vendors there. So you can come do yoga with me. And then we have like question Q&A. We'll raffle off some stuff definitely a George Jersey. And the other thing we want to announce is that Bruce and I, um, in March, we are leading a retreat to India and I have all the information that is available now. I will post it in the link below, um, but it's going to be a two week trip. It's super amazing. It's a ton of service. And we are also, uh, all the proceeds that we make are going back to operation freedom, freedom pause. So operation freedom pause takes rescued animals, little dogs that are they rescue dogs and then they train them to become service dogs and they create teams and then networks around those teams um, so that veterans always have support and it's a really, really amazing organization. So Operation Freedom Paws, get on the bag wagon with us um, and they'll be at the event um, for the Women of the Niners if you want to be there. So we're very excited about that. That's awesome. Super cool. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. What's the quote, Dad? We've talked a lot. Okay. We'll jump to it. So uh, you're going to have to, I can't remember who wrote it, but anyway, the quote of the week is home is not where you were born. Home is where all your attempts to escape cease. Read it one more time, Em. Home is not where you were born. Home is where all of your attempts to escape cease. Home is not where you were born. Home is where all of your attempts to escape cease. My only thing for that is. Yes. I would say home is wherever Claire is because she decorates everything and makes everything very homey. No matter where, no matter where, any every place I've, I've lived in, like five, I've lived in a, I've lived in a new house almost every year. My since my entire football career since college, and each one she somehow made me feel like it was home. Pretty impressive. Yes. So, um, so this is a little bit more in addition to that, and those of us who have partners and lovers and all that kind of stuff in our lives that help us with that. That's super important. The, I think part of this is just that we can be in what's considered home and not feel like that's really where we belong. And so it's just a sense of belonging. So we're out there. Uh, let's make the world a safe place and inclusive and uh, helping people feel that they don't have to escape. So, all right, G, no, it's a super busy day for you. We're super excited about the Bengals weekend. Thank you for joining us here on the Hidden Pearls podcast. Emmy, another marvelous job. Uh, Georgie, you have a super great day. We can't wait to see you. I'm going to have a great day today. And we're going to go eat breakfast right now, and we're looking forward to it. So any finals? Any final thoughts? Um, if you have the opportunity, and if you can do it, call your mom today. All right, everybody. Tell her you love her. Right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Woo! Bye. Three, two, one.